friends and welcome to a new video and welcome to one at this point of my favorite videos to film which I never thought I'd say because I was very anti-TBR, very anti-establishment if you will and I have turned around. I am a believer now. I pledge my allegiance to the flag and I absolutely love TBRs now. Not only because I actually don't get nearly half as lost as I used to with like what to pick up next but because I'm actually reading it. Like I'm actually reading from my TBR are, which I never thought I'd say. Maybe she's matured by now. Maybe she's just a different person now. Welcome to my TBR jar picks my November reads, my November TBR. I am quite excited about this. I made some really good progress actually with my October TBR. So let me show you and give you a quick little rundown, not a wrap up because my wrap up is like a separate video, but I will give you a rundown out of the books that I had on my TBR card, which ones I actually ended up reading. And it's quite exciting because this month I got to put a few more books into my cart, which is exciting. And honestly, I talked about this with my patrons. I feel like November is lined up to be one of those months where I could read anything or nothing at all. And so I'm a bit scared about November. So I'm going to have to keep it more realistic, I think, than ever before because I just don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. And so that's Danger Zone because in the past I've made mistakes in that headspace and then I've chosen books that I was not going to read in the end. Putting a quick pause to that thought because I know I'm a reader and you guys are readers and because we're all reader girlies I have to talk about the sponsor of today's video book of the month book of the month is the subscription service for us readers and you guys know how much I love them because their team is doing the very annoying task of investigating researching and compiling a list of all of those new and early release titles that sound amazing to give us a curated selection of anywhere between five to seven book titles so that every single month we can choose a book two books three books if we want to and gets them in our stunning blue box every single single month. And if physical books are not your speed, they now offer audiobooks too on their app, which is amazing. So you can choose this or you can choose that, but us readers are covered. What's so cool about them is that they split up their array of books so evenly. So you've got your really popular authors, you have got your up and coming ones, your debut authors in a variety of different genres with new releases that you can get for so cheap in comparison to the bookstore. So if you use my code MELREADS, you can get your first book for $9.99. Love is in the air for me this fall. I have been very much in a romance mood, so you better bet these were the two books that I chose. One of my most anticipated releases for the year, Check and Made by Ali Hazelwood, and this spells love. Life is too short not to read many romances. So again, if you guys would like to check out Book of the Month, I will be leaving my link at the top of the description. Take advantage of it, and I'll see you on the flip side. This was the progress made, well, part of it actually, from my TBR last month. I ended up reading Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, which I gave three stars to. Powerless by Elsie Silver, which I gave five stars, and this was so good. I ended up buying Hopeless and Heartless. That's a conversation for another time. A conversation for the wrap up, but this, this was good. Read it, please. I beg. Mord by Terry Pratchett, which I gave four stars to. Then we have got Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo, also a four star. And then I read the rest, the entirety of the Mindfuck series. If I had to like rate like the bind up, it'd be like a 4.5 to like a five star, but I read all of it. I also made progress with these two books. So I'm currently reading Long Shadow and Words of Radiance. These are my two ongoing reads right now, which it's just like, it's two, <laughs> it's like two completely different ends of like the spectrum. You've got this, esta animalidad, brutal, brutal, señores, brutal. And then we've got this, which is like 2% of what this is, the duality of me. I get to pick out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books, technically, if I wanted to. The question is, do I want to pick that many? I don't know. And I also have decisions to make because I still have all of these books from my September TBR, which was the very first time I did my TBR jar. And I had to read any of these books. And so I don't know what to do with them because I really do feel like I could pick these up at any second. So like, what do you do in this case? Like, I don't know what to do with these. I know for sure I do want like an audio pick for this month. So this is staying in the TBR cart of Fire Endless. So I feel like the only one I'm really going to be taking out is the Godparent Trap because it just doesn't need to be there. I think if I choose six new books, it's gonna be good. And as always, you guys know me. I love mood reading, but I also am really loving the structure of prompts as like a guide for my TBR. And that's kind of what this is for me. It is a guide. All in all, if I read these books, great. If I don't read these books, great. I'm not putting the pressure on myself to read all of them or to read only from this pile. If I want to pick out something else for my shelves or borrow something from the library, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's get on with picking out my reads for November. Let us choose our very first 
prompt Rooney. It's very exciting. For our very first November prompt, we have got, oh, oh, that's good. Okay, I need to think about this. Mente fría, Melanie, mente fría. Ya la bestia, mente fría. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna choose for this one, but we have got, if this wants to focus, booty guru pose, five star prediction. Okay, what is a five star prediction I have? I'm going to pick out The Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent, which I will announce right here is our November Patreon book club pick, which in case you want to join us, it is always linked down below in case you want to <clears throat> join the Citadel and have a good time. I don't have it physically because I thought I'd bought it so that it could get here by end of month. Turns out I never placed my order, so we're about to go do that and actually purchase the book, which at this point is kind of tradition. This is the second month we've actually bought a book during the TBR video for the TBR. I do want to own the book physically in case I end up annotating it, which is very likely because I absolutely loved Daughter of No Worlds by the same author, but also because of my wrists and my carpal tunnel, I don't want to be holding like such a heavy book because it's like a big one. And so I want to make sure that I have the digital as well, just in case. So we're about to go buy that. This book just sounds so good. Human or vampire, the rules of survival are the same. Never trust, never yield, and always, always guard your heart. The adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Oraya, carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to becoming something more than prey is entering the Kajari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. To survive, Oraya is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival, Rain. He's a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, and an enemy to her father's crown. Listen, it sounds so freaking good. I love Daughter of No World, and if that's anything to go by, I think I'm going to enjoy this one and so we're going to put this as our five star prediction because I gave the other one five stars and this one better be a five stars too. If I read a vampire book by Carissa Brotman and that is not five stars, I've lost my hope in everything, in life, in just in everything. Okay, so I don't know when exactly this happened, but it looks like the hardcover is not available and neither is the paperback. It looks like they're both up for pre-order because it looks like the book was picked up by a publisher. So with that being said, I am just going to have to get the book on KU because I apparently am not able to get a physical copy right now. So I'm just gonna get this on KU and let that be what it needs to be. <laughs> I said this in my last video, but I feel like I have to reiterate this once more. This still smells like coffee beans. And the lore behind that is that this used to hold my coffee beans and I, for the life of me, cannot take that coffee smell away. And so it still smells like that. Prompt number two is going to be, oh, this is, ooh, oh, this is, <laughs> Okay, so we have got a book. This is so chaotic. I'm so sorry. We have got a book by a by POC author. I was excited about this because I can actually sneak in one of my six books I want to read before the year is over. I'm going to include the blood trials for this one, which is so exciting because right around this time of year, last year, I started this book. <laughs> can you tell the pattern? Can you tell we have got a modus operandi? Anyways, I started this book and I never finished it. It is also a five-star prediction, by the way, and so I loved that this ended up working out for this one. So I'm going to pick out the blood trials. And in this one, we follow Ikenna, who has recently lost her grandfather to an assassination. Said grandfather is the same person who trained her to not only know martial skills, but to also utilize her blood gift that he always told her to keep a secret because it could be and would be used against her if people knew that that was a gift she possessed. Now she knows that only somebody from the inside could have carried out the order to assassinate her grandfather and that only a Praetorian guard in this world, only they have the ability to do so. And so she enlists to the Praetorian trials, which is an initiation that not a lot of people survive in the hopes of kind of infiltrating herself in the system and figuring out exactly what happened to her grandfather. And I know this has got like a trainer trainee romance, which is one of my favorite things ever. And I've heard that the series is very, very good. I've heard some people argue that the second book, I think this is a duology, so like the finale of it is not as good as this first book, but I still want to give it a shot. And I still want to see what this is about because I have been meaning to read this for way too long. So I think this is like a perfect, little read right there. We are halfway through what I'm about to pick out and I hope that the next prompt I get incentivizes me to pick out a romance book because this is very like fantasy heavy right now. In fact, aside from Tomorrow Times 3, I don't currently have any non-fantasy reads on my TBR 
card, which I, I hope this is somewhat related to romance because a girly pop needs it. And this, oh my god, a YA book? Are you choking? A YA book, which at first I was a bit stumped by, as you could tell by my reaction. And now I'm just trying to figure out what the vibe is because I do not have Finale Physically by Stephanie Garber. However, I am planning a little continuing the series I'm in the middle of vlog, and obviously Caraval is one of those series. I only have Finale left, and so maybe for a YA book that'd be a good one to include here because I can just buy it physically, but also I can just borrow it on Libby and like call it a day. I think responsibly a girl has got to put Finale for this question. I think it'd be irresponsible of me not to, you know what I mean? And so in the Caraval series, we follow the Dragna sisters. We follow Donatella and Scarlet. Particularly in the first book, we follow Scarlet more closely as she dreams of going to Caraval, which is this magical event happening every once in a while where people get to experience magic and a set of trials and riddles and puzzles like no other. And she actually does get to go despite her father's wishes. Her father is very strict, very, very not the vibe, if I do say so myself. And Donatella moves hell and earth in order to get her sister over to Caraval. And lo and behold, Donatella goes missing. And so Scarlet's mission during Caraval is to find her sister. In the second one, we follow Donatella more closely, although we do get to see bits and pieces of Scarlet. And I do believe in this last one in finale, we do have dual POVs, I think, where we see both of the sisters. Neither of their storylines are quite conclusive yet. And so we have to have both POVs in order to get closure on both of those ends. And so quite excited about it, quite scared if I do this myself, but I do think it'd be amazing to finish out a series. Finale is available as opposed to The Serpent in the Wings of Night, which did not treat me kindly. So we are going to get this paperback ordered. So we're gonna get to read this very soon. And the reason why I am buying Finale physically is because I did place a hold on the book, but this is going to take about two weeks to get to me on Libby. And so just to make sure that I do have the physical book, because I also own the rest of them physically, I did place an order, but you know, I may just have the digital by then. Who knows? We're going for the fourth book and I need a romance. Please, is this a romance? Do I want to exchange it? Do I keep, do I exchange? Do I keep, do I exchange? If this is not a romance, I may just have to switch out the prompt. I have to be honest because I need something lighter in between these fancy reads. And so we've got, ooh, first in series. This works out perfectly. Ah! Okay, first in series. I'm gonna go for Addicted to You by Becca and Krista Ritchie because I, oh my God, this works out so perfectly because I have been wanting to read this for a while. And not only that, but I've been talking to Kristen from Kristen Talks Books about reading this book together. And so I told her, I was like, I'm going to include this in my November TBR. And I was hoping and praying that I'd get a prompt that would fit this book. And so we have got a first in a series. We're gonna go for Addicted to You. And I've already read Kiss the Sky, which doesn't follow like the main two characters in this one, but it does follow Lily's sister Rose. And I love Kiss the Sky so much, but everybody and their mama told me when I read Kiss the Sky that I needed to read Addicted to You, not only because we get to see the start of Cabalaway, but also because a lot of people love Lily and Lo, and I want to see what that is about. And so I'm quite excited to read this, and to read it with Kristen is going to be quite, quite fun. And in this one, we have got our main character, Lily Calloway, who is addicted to sex. What a start. And then we have got Lo, who is addicted to alcohol. So the main characters to hide their addictions from their families have been fake dating for a really long time. Because of the dynamic they have got going on, they end up being each other's safe haven. And what was once fake starts slowly but surely becoming something realer and realer. I am a bit on the fence about how Becca and Krista Ritchie are going to approach the whole addiction subject and how they are going to approach that particularly with a relationship of two people who have got one. And so I'm interested. I'm scared, but I am nonetheless excited to read this. And thankfully it's gonna be a body read, so I am gonna have like moral support. Addicted to you, we're doing it. <laughs> Prompt number five, if I could pick another romance, that'd be fantastic. This is a big one, I'm not gonna pick that one. I feel like that's gonna be <laughs> fantasy related. Okay, let's, let's keep diving. <laughs> 
and let us go for this seems short enough to be like inoffensive i don't know about that and we have got no no that's not no <laughs> I got <laughs> a romance, just not the kind I was looking for. We have got a dark romance. What happens if I just take the dark out of it and it's just a romance? <laughs> or what happens if I say, I can read the fine print and this has got a dark cover. It's a dark romance. <laughs> What happens if I do that? I make my own rules. Like, why am I asking? Like, I'm asking the air, the universe? But I've been wanting to read this too. It's a dark romance. <laughs> if you look at it that way, like, it's not a lie. <laughs> it's just not a dark romance in the sense that it's like, you know what you think it is. I, listen, I read the Mindfuck series, all of it, last month. I think I deserve a prize. And so I'm going to, I'm going to read this. If anybody's gonna be in the comments, being, that's not a dark romance, girl, I know. Girl, get with it, we know. I am bendy and snappy always not very flexible but we pretend to be and so I will include this one in here because <laughs> I want to read my first Lauren Asher book in this one we follow Rowan who is a billionaire he owns with his family I don't know if it's one theme park or several theme parks five-star hotels and they've just got like a whole ass empire and in one drunken night our main character Zara ends up sending a hate mail like it's not even a proper application it's hate mail she sends this very special spiteful, hateful, very critical letter to Rowan and his company about how his rights suck. And in the midst of reading that, Rowan has the amazing idea to hire that very same girly pop to his company, which comes as a surprise to her. And then they fall in love and it goes from there. And it's really good. I've heard, I don't know. And we'll see, we'll see when we get there. But listen, two romance books. We have started to win and we are going to go for, oh, this is crazy. Okay, that is so good good though? Am I about to do this? Maybe. The prompt we got is continue a series. I have two options. And so for this one, I'm going to keep my options open, by the way, and I'm going to give myself two different options and we'll see kind of where we land. But one of the books I'd like to read for this prompt, potentially, maybe if I am in the mood for it, is going to be Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. And this is the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe. So in the first one, we follow Magnolia and BJ in their very toxic relationship they have got going and that they have had going on for years. Now in the first book we see these two characters, the main ones in this book, more towards the side. We have got Christian who has a turbulent history with Magnolia herself and then Daisy Hay who is the sister of a crime boss and Christian and Daisy also have got history together and in this one they are trying to make a sort of situationship relationship work while also being involved having history with other people, the Magnolia Parks universe kind of thrives on being rich people's drama, very much like Gossip Girl, and also very much like Gossip Girl in the sense that everybody is sort of with each other at some point and that in the same way that Blair kind of swung back and forth between like Nate, Chuck, Nate, Chuck and then was kind of you know canoodling with like other people on the side or like talking to other people on the side to make people jealous and in the same way that Serena just kind of kept bouncing back and forth between like Dan, Nate and like other people. It's sort of the same with this one because they are all friends and they all reside in the same circles. It is set in London which is also quite cool because it exposes us I think to a setting that we don't typically see in most books. I will try and read this, and if I don't read Daisy Hates, then the plan is to read Morningstar by Pierce Brown. Also something I don't own physically because I haven't bothered to buy the next few books in the Red Rising series, but I have read Red Rising and Golden Sun, which are the first two books. Morningstar I currently have checked out from Libby. So the setting for Red Rising is Mars, and at this point in time where the books start, humanity has colonized the entirety of the solar system, and because of this colonialist process, Process, the world and the system were divided into different colored casts. So you have got the gold at the very top. They are enhanced in every way. They are smarter, faster, stronger, and just kind of better in every sense. And then at the bottom of the ladder, you have got the reds and our main character, Darrow, is a red and they have been lied to their entire lives and their entire existences. And so Darrow sets out on this journey after a tragedy happens to upend the system, infiltrate himself into it and really change the way that things work, not only for the reds, for his family, for the people that he knows, but just for everybody involved who doesn't quite know the truth of the world and how things work. I love the commentary on colonialism and different caste systems and how all of these things are passed down generationally. I think that the way 
way that Pierce Brown sort of um, narrates the story is so very fascinating. And the inspiration of the series is also quite interesting because it pulls from Roman history and Roman mythology while also pulling from British Irish history and relations. And so I think the layers and layers that the book has are quite fascinating. And so whether I read Daisy Hates or I read Morningstar, I think I have got a nice little pull for that particular question. And although I was getting overexcited with choosing prompts and I wanted to pick out another one, I am not going to do that to myself, mostly because look at this. Just look at the array of books we have got lined up for November. It is quite intimidating. We have got quite a few longer books and we have got options. Not to mention that there are also like other things I do want to read on the side, be it for video projects or for myself. And so I don't want to overwhelm myself with options on the TBR card because otherwise I do think it may just lead to a little bit of disaster. And so we're trying to keep it realistic here. So there's that friends. Those are all of the books on my November TBR. That is my TBR jar picks all of my November reads. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. And also let a girl know down in the comments, what are you guys going to be reading in the month of November? Do you have any plans? Do you have any prospects? Do you have any suggestions for yourself on what to read? Maybe some anticipated releases? Do let a girl know all of that down in the comments. And if you reach the very end of the video, let us leave like a wool emoji. I'll pop it on the screen right here. Leave that emoji down in the comments if you reach the very end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already for more bookish content like this. And if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon always linked down below in case you guys want more content. Live shows, a book club, a Discord server, just a bunch of cool stuff overall. That is always linked down below alongside all of my socials. Thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye!